Hello everybody, my name is Luke Marr and this is Hot Mode and today on Hot Mode we are going to be giving you the inside scoop about Matthew Williams' appointment to Givenchy. Even in the middle of a pandemic, fashion is still playing musical chairs with fashion designers. Recently, Matthew Williams, founder of the streetwear brand Alix, was appointed as the creative director at the Haute Couture House of Givenchy. He is succeeding Claire White Keller, the first woman to be appointed as the creative director at the brand. Her Haute Couture collections were revered, but her ready to wear and accessories never seem to get customers to open their wallets wide enough. But LVMH, which is the conglomerate that owns Givenchy and around 70 other brands, doesn't like to lose money. To me, it's Givenchy's way of saying, how can we stop the three-year bleeding with a designer who will instantly give the brand a cool factor while also being able to make the brand profitable again? Now, for those that have never really heard of or care to hear about Matthew Williams, like myself before this appointment, let's do a little history. Williams was a fashion school dropout before moving to Los Angeles, where he subsequently went on to date and work with a young lady, Gaga, who he calls Dada. Okay. From there, he worked with Kanye West, and this is where he met Virgil Abloh, creative director of Louis Vuitton's men's collections, if you didn't know. I believe LVMH is forecasting Williams' work at Givenchy will be as profitable as Vuitton under Virgil. He and Virgil went on to start the brand Bin Trill, a fashion collective popular in the streetwear scene, with a few others like Heron Preston, but eventually left to start Alix, his solo brand, in 2015. Now, the announcement about Givenchy was made Monday, June 15th, in a public manner by Givenchy. I want to say something about how honored I am to be taking on the role of creative director of Givenchy. It's been my lifelong dream to be in this position, and it's really surreal that it's finally here. Um, I've worked every day for 15 years, you know, towards a single goal, and it's, it's super, super surreal. Um, and at the same time, it's bittersweet because we're living in unprecedented times in the world. And I just hope in some way I can bring hope and, you know, with my community and colleagues, create positive change for our industry and for the world. And I'd like to use this platform to do so. But the theory has been passed around before. Pierre M. Pillay, codenamed Pamboy and senior editor at Love Magazine, has been talking about the rumors about Matthew Williams going to Givenchy since at least April. Matthew Williams as a leaks has been a steady earner with the streetwear customer, and Matthew has developed some of his own brand staples that are instantly recognizable. Pierre tweeted on April 13th that Julian DeSena is going to Givenchy, question mark, exclamation point. He replied to that tweet which said, Matthew Williams had allegedly been parading around the town saying he got the job, and the Arnaud's loathed bragging. But on April 28th, Pierre tweeted, just been told that Matthew Williams is eventually taking over all of of Givenchy, which will help us explain what Williams' job at Givenchy will actually be. He will be taking over both women's and men's collections at Givenchy, as well as accessories, design, and couture. And now I think it's the point where we start to hear what Luke thinks about all of this. To be really truly honest, I'm not terribly interested in Williams' work except for a few accessories, but I know that LVMH thinks he will be a moneymaker. LVMH, as we said, are in the game of not losing money, but they're also in the game of making a lot of it. Bernard Arnault, owner of LVMH, isn't the third richest man in the world for being kind. He runs a tight ship, and if he owns your company or you work for his, you should be making bank for him. Otherwise, you won't be there that long. CC Claire White Keller. Williams has created two products that are classics for leaks and instantly stand out to me. Firstly is his signature roller coaster belt, known for its seatbelt-like buckle, which has helped to update the belt and give younger customers a reason to actually wear one. The roller coaster belt was actually already made in collaboration with Dior Men by Kim Jones. Jones is a known mentor of Williams and both have been influenced by streetwear culture. The other piece that makes me semi excited is the shoes with the removable soles. Williams and his team at Alix developed a Chelsea boot and loafer that essentially has two uses. One use is a normal loafer or Chelsea boot, but the shoe comes with a detached sole that the shoe can be placed in, giving it height and a more modern edge, which can 
can be easily removed as well. In reality, he's bringing less of an old world fashion thought process to clothing, but rather modernizing clothing to fit the needs of the new generation. He understands that reversible and two-in-one clothing is something we grew up with and wouldn't mind seeing in our luxury products. While I think his mind for products is great, the clothing Aleeks has presented over the years is, well, lackluster in my opinion. I won't speak too much on the clothing as a debut collection has been rumored to be happening in October of 2020, but between the limits on resources and inability to properly oversee products due to restrictions on travel, I'm not expecting to be wowed. But to be honest, Hubert de Givenchy was never really some amazing designer whose work absolutely thrilled people. He made nice clothing and definitely carved out his own space by making two-piece sets chic helping to elevate the bikini and developing a few of his own fabrics, like satung, a mixture of satin and shantung. His clothing was classic, but I wouldn't say it was ever going to go down in history like a Dior or Balenciaga, and I honestly think that's the reason why we're even in this whole Givenchy mess. Now, that's my whole issue with Givenchy to begin with. Nobody really knows the history, so nobody's really able to touch on the history and make it modern. But the brand, which was bought by LVMH in 1988, has hosted some pretty iconic talent outside of Uber. John Galliano, Alexander McQueen, Julian McDonald, Oswald Boateng, Ricardo Tisci, and of course most recently Claire White Keller have all left their mark on the brand, and it has been a breeding ground for some of British fashion's most famous names, and it carries that tradition on with Matthew Williams. It's also hard not to note the lack of diversity within fashion companies as the Black Lives Matter movement continues and the industry hopefully starts to come to terms with its racist past. Givenchy has only ever had one person of color who was a creative director, and that was Oswald Boateng. Then combine that with Virgil Abloh being the only other black person of color to be a creative director of Louis Vuitton's men's, out of the 30-something fashion brands that LVMH owns is, well, disturbing. I bring this up because Matthew Williams' work is considered streetwear, which delineates its style, silhouette, fabric choices, colors, and textures, amongst other things, from black culture. One of Williams' mentors, another LVMH creative director, Kim Jones, also gained popularity for his streetwear designs at Louis Vuitton and Dior, and both are white men. Now, I'm not trying to drag anybody, but I wanna point this moment out. If black designers and stylists created streetwear, how come they haven't landed jobs at some of these gigantic fashion houses, yet their white counterparts have? It's important that we note these discrepancies and discuss these aspects of brands like Louis Vuitton, Givenchy, Dior, Fendi, Celine, Loewe, Kenzo, and Berluti, which are more behind the scenes issues rather than in the glitz and glam of the industry. I hope LVMH as well as other brands have begun to look inward and see that diversity isn't just on the runway or in in a campaign, but rather within your design teams, executive positions, your production, marketing, and sales teams too. I do want to manifest one thing though. Williams, I think, for menswear and accessories will be a great addition to the Givenchy brand, but for women's and couture, I'm cautious whether he can carry all of that load. Would the appointment of another British powerhouse designer be just the double dose of life support Givenchy needs? My fantasy duo would be Matthew Williams and Moalola Ogunlesi. This British designer has created one of the most memorable fashion shows of the 2010s with her spring-summer 2020 collection that showed smart tailoring with bullet holes dripping with blood. Her brand is young, but has already developed a signature bag, which is chic as f so her creating memorable accessories to boost the brand's leather goods output would be easy. She's a CSM graduate, part of the London scene, and like predecessors John Galliano and Alexander McQueen, have an immense ability to tell stories through clothing. Moa Lola deserves the budget and ability to get creative, the same way John and Lee were afforded the opportunity in the 90s and 2000s. I will definitely give Matthew some room to breathe, but if it gets sticky, I expect the cavalry to be brought in. One thing that does sort of excite me though about Williams is the way he speaks about society sustainability. Alix is definitely trying to be as eco-friendly as a fashion brand can be. He is incorporating everything from recycled jersey, denim, and fishing nets in his repertoire, alongside waterless dyeing processes and biodegradable packaging. His is a vision of ethical fashion, quietly sewn in the very fabric of his brand, according to Women's Wear Daily, or according to someone. 
I'm hoping that he can bring that to Givenchy as well. The brand doesn't stand for much to young people, and Williams could make it into an eco-friendly fashion haven that creates ready-to-wear and couture, which becomes a pillar for luxury sustainability if done correctly. Williams is also incredibly interested in craftsmanship and sees sustainability as a couture in its own way. He understands that sustainable clothing is not affordable for everyone, but mix that with his love for craftsmanship and design innovation, I have a weird feeling Williams might bring quite a bit of honor back to Givenchy. All in all, I'm just waiting and watching. Givenchy as a brand recently has been a dud muffin. So if someone like Matthew Williams can fix it up and make nice clothes, I'll watch. But I'm expecting to see some sort of excitement. So see you all in October at the Givenchy First Show Review with Matthew Williams. Not with him, it's just I'm gonna be talking about him. So that is the end of the video. I appreciate you guys watching. Please let me know what you think of this appointment in the comments down below. And you can also check out all of my social media links in the description box below too. So I'll see you guys on the next one and TTYL.